Hi everyone, it's Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we would look at a little bit of comparison about frugal living, decluttering, and depression era. And how does that all fit together? Well, I do a lot of thinking about this stuff since I came from depression era parents and I'm constantly seeing how they understood this stuff so much better than we do today because they didn't have all of that outside interference. They didn't have social media. They didn't have so much marketing. My parents didn't even have a television until 1957. They listened to the radio. And so any advertisements or anything that they had would have came over the radio. And the kinds of things they heard on the radio were so much different than we hear today. They heard things like a little dab will do you when it talked about men's hair gel. Those were the type of things that were integrated into the commercials to fit with the time. And we all know times have changed. So let's get started and talk about some of this. From my perspective, depression era people understood minimalism. They understood it better than we do. A lot of us aspire to be more minimal, to have less clutter, but they lived it. And they lived it because it was a time that you took care of your things, that you made sure that things you had were repaired and cared for. They looked at frugality as a normal part of their life. And so many people today look at consumerism as a normal part of their lives. It has just transpired into that way of living and people just don't even think about it anymore. Sometimes I get a little bit of criticism on the way that I live. I live probably close to off-grid, but the off-gridders will tell you I don't live off-grid. But some of the city people will think that I live off-grid. I only have one heater in the living room. That's it. That's the only heater we have. We have rooms closed off because it's just my husband and I, and that heater really doesn't go beyond the living room. So in the kitchen, I have the cook stove. So when I'm cooking something, it will get warm in the kitchen, but if you're not cooking anything, it's cold in the kitchen. We have a space heater in the bathroom that we only run when we're going to shower and it's really, really cold. And we have a space heater in our bedroom that we use at night. That's all the heat that we have. We have an air conditioner unit in the living room and in our bedroom. And that is it. And it's a window unit in both places. And we only run them when it's super, super, super hot. I'm talking over 90 in the house is when we run the one in the living room. And the one upstairs, the same thing at night and at night only. So many people would not choose to live this way. But when I grew up, we didn't even have an air conditioner, not even a window unit. We had none of those things. So I think I am living in luxury. And a lot of times it is just your perspective that makes you think that you are not living as well as you should. I listened to a girl the other day that said, I grew up where they put plastic on the windows and we only had single pane windows. That's how I still live. And she was feeling bad for herself saying she was raised like this and people made fun of her. But I was raised like this and so was everyone around me. People didn't make fun of each other for those things because that was normal. And the depression era folks saw the importance of frugality even after the rationing ended. My parents continued to be sparing and careful with their money. They continued to live the way they had always lived, not overeating, not overspending, not overdoing anything in their day-to-day -day lives. If there was anything they overdid is they worked too hard because people in that day did a lot of physical work to keep their households and their farms running. But they saw the value of being able to cope better when financial things happened like they're happening to us today. Only back then they had lived through that 
So they were always in the back of their mind preparing for if they needed to live like that again. So they just did not increase their level of living once the rationings ended. 67% of people still live paycheck to paycheck in America as of December 22. I know people that can't even get paycheck to paycheck. I know people that can make it two days and their paycheck is gone and they're living on credit the rest of the time until their paycheck comes again because their paycheck is just covering their car payments, their mortgage, those kinds of things, and they don't have anything extra. So it's really important for us to try to live below our means. That means not ever spending more than we make. And sometimes people have already gotten themselves into a situation where they have too much house payment, too much car payment, too much above their means to be able to get back below their means to be able to afford their groceries as well. So we have to be so careful to analyze what we can afford and make sure that we have some gap room in there for when things go bad. I continue to live where I have a water well. And there's times the water goes down, but I don't pay for the water. I just pay for the electricity to pump the water. And we're very careful about how much electricity that we use. We don't have trash pickup, so I don't have that bill. But I do have to haul my stuff to the recycling bins that are seven miles away when my recycling bags get full. But we make a careful choice to make sure that we are only taking the recycling bags when we are already going that direction for something else. There's times that my water pipes freeze out here. There's times that my internet will go off and my electricity on a sunny day for no reason. But I still feel like I am living in luxury because I have everything I need. That mindset to tell yourself that you have what you need is what we have to keep telling ourselves so that we can continue to live below our means. I don't have enough plug-ins in all of my rooms. Some of my rooms don't have any outlets at all and we have to run extension cords. My drains will plug up going out to my sewer lagoon, but this house was originally built with no indoor plumbing whatsoever. So I feel very, very blessed that I have indoor plumbing. And I remind myself of that every time that I am without a way to drain my water or a way to run my water because maybe the electricity has gone off. Those are all things, basic needs, that we need to remind ourselves that we are so thankful that we have those things. My parents didn't grow up with running water in the house. They didn't grow up with even a bathroom inside their house or a toilet. They had to go out to the outhouse even at night. So we have to remind ourselves that we are living so much better than the people were from the depression and yet they made it work and they were thankful and they took care of everything they had because they knew it was not easily replaced. I think sometimes about the things that I don't buy, the non-essentials we don't have and we don't purchase and yet we are living with everything that we need. I don't buy planners. I use free calendars that come from the bank or the pharmacy. And I use that to plan my bills when they're due. And I use that to write down birthdays. I also use it to put goals at the top every single month to remind myself of what I'm working for. The one this month says spend less and work less. That's my goals. My ones last month said self-love to remind myself to love myself and treat myself well through this life. I have some months that say to prioritize myself and to make room for myself in my own life. These are goals that I've set for myself in my 50s. Much of my life I spent dedicating to raising my children and helping my children all through their education. And now I feel like it is my time 
to try to remind myself that I'm still there. Sometimes as parents, we forget what we even looked like before our children were born. What did we like? What were our goals? What were our dreams? What did we enjoy doing? And so I'm at a place in my life where I'm reminding myself of those things that I liked to do that I haven't been able to do for a long time. I have focus on the life that you're living, pay attention to yourself, listen to yourself, take it easy this month, these are the kinds of goals that I'm setting for myself as I move forward, and none of those cost any money. Being good to yourself doesn't have to cost money. As I grew up with my parents, so many things were done within the home. We didn't go to the doctor a lot. We used a lot of self remedies. And maybe you remember some of these. Baking soda was used for so much. It was used on bee stings to pull out the stinger. It was used on mosquito bites. It was used on chicken pox. It was put in your bath water to help with any kind of skin irritation or itching. You made this little paste of water and baking soda, and you could use it on so many things. We used Vaseline on so many things, skin irritations. We used it in the place of Neosporin because we didn't have Neosporin in our house growing up. We used these little cheap home remedy items to be able to make do. And these are some of the things that I think have gone by the wayside. How many of us have medicine cabinets full of all kinds of things, but we didn't grow up with all of those choices? I think the trick to a lot of this is to minimalize. Minimalize our choices. Choose the most important things in your household that you need. Choose the most important things in your life that you need to be happy. And sometimes what you need to be happy are just things like the goals that I just read to you. So get rid of some of those ball and chain decisions. Some of those things that are keeping you living paycheck to paycheck. How can you minimize your house, your responsibilities, and your bills to get back to a more simpler, type of life where you can afford to make your payments and you can enjoy the finer things in life which may be just living a little more simply. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I know I come from a different perspective than some of the other people that you listen to on YouTube and I really appreciate those of you that listen to me and understand where I'm coming from. There's so much to be gained from this life. There's so many things to be learned from the depression era. I hope that you will stay and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.